a pleasant day STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. So this is our second video lesson for week three to four. We have the areas under the normal curve. So last time, we have discussed the properties of the normal distribution. This time, we will be able to identify the areas of regions under the normal curve. So these are the areas under the standard normal curve with mean on the center and one standard deviation each. Notice that the area with one standard deviation from the mean is about 68%, or it is exactly 68.26% of the data. Now, from two standard deviation, from positive two to negative two, we have a total distribution of 95.44%, or approximately 95%. And three standard deviations from the mean, which is from positive three to negative three, is about 99.74% of the distribution, or it is approximately 99.7%. So applying the empirical rule, the empirical rule suggests that there is a 68, 99.7 distribution for every standard deviation from the mean. So negative one to positive one, negative two to positive two, and negative three to positive three, respectively. And the empirical rule also suggests that when we draw the normal curve, we always use values from negative three to t so that it will perfectly represent the normal curve already. Okay, so when we draw, you will not go any more four and negative four respectively. So it is enough that you draw it with negative three and three because it is almost 100%. So only few percentage remain on the tails of the distribution. So let us proceed. So let's have an example. So a nurse in Pampanga High School measured the weight of 1,000 grade 11 students. Their mean weight is 50 kilograms with a standard deviation of 5 kilograms. So assuming that the data is normally distributed, this means that ninety-nine point seventy four percent times 1,000, meaning there are 99.79% which are between these means or this distribution. If, for example, our mean is 50, so this is 50 and our standard deviation is five kilograms, so meaning we have 55, 60, and 65. Then we have 45, 40, and 35. So if we talk about 99.74% um, of 1,000, meaning almost 997 students have weight between 35 to 65 kilograms. And there are 954 students who have weight between 40 to 60 kilograms. And we have 680, almost 680 students, which are between 45 to 55 kilometers. So that is the use of that distribution. Okay, so let's proceed to the next slide. So look at that one. So that is our definition. Next. So it is also important that you know how to use the Z table. So notice the standard normal distribution or the Z table provides the area between the mean and the Z score. So what is shown here is only the value from half of the distribution. So it can only provide us up to 0 0.4990. 
For values of z above 3.09, you use the area 0 0.499 for the area. So for example, when z is 1.45, you simply look at 1.4 and then look at 0 0.05 and then their intersection is 0 0.4265. So that is the corresponding area. And when you graph it, located is 0, and then we have 1, 2, and so on, 3. And 1.45 is located somewhere between 1 and 2. So this is the vertical line that represents 1.45. So when you shade the area from the center, which is the mean going to 1.45, the area will be 0 0.4265. And that area corresponds to a certain probability. And what is that probability? The probability is 42.65%. Simply move two decimal places to the right. So that is how we locate and use the Z table. Now let's have examples in finding the area using the z-table. So find the area from the mean to the given z-score using the z-table. First, z equals 1. Second, z equals 1.36. Third, z is equal to negative 2.58. And fourth one, we have z equals 0 0.75. So let us answer this one. So find the area the score that corresponds to z equals one. So first is we locate the first column that is z is equal to 1.0, that one. Next, on the first row, we have third digit 0, 0.00, and then find the intersection. The intersection is 0 0.3413. So how do we illustrate that one? So it is exactly here. Okay, so the shaded area is to the right of the mean. Next, find the area that corresponds to Z equals 1.36. First, we locate the following. First column, the first two digits, 1.3. So that is the z value. Let's have the first row. Let's look at the third digit. It's 0 0.06. And then find intersection. The intersection is 0 0.4131. So that is now our area under the normal curve. How do we illustrate it? So notice that 1.6 is somehow located here. So if this is 1, this is 2, and this is 3, notice that this area, the shaded yellow area here, represents this probability as well. So in here, our probability is 41.31%. Next, we locate the following. First, we get the first two digit, so we Disregard first the negative sign. So that is 2.5. And then get the first row or third digit, 0 0.08. So the intersection is 0 0.4951. But since our distribution is, our z-score is negative, so the shaded part is to the left. So notice that below zero, we have negative one, negative two, and negative three. And where is 2.58 negative 2 located? Somewhere between negative two and three. So when you shade this yellow area, that represents an area which is 0 0.4951. Or it is also um, a probability which represents 49.51%. Let's have the last one. Find the area that corresponds to negative 0 0.75. First, we locate the first two digits in the first column. So we have 
0.7. So, we disregard the negative sign. So, that one. Next, we locate the first row using the third digit. So, that is 0 0.05. And then, get the intersection. So, that is 0 0.2734. Notice that it's located again to the left of the mean because located here is negative 1, negative 2, and we have negative 3. And negative 0 0.75 is somewhere between 0 and negative 1, closer to negative 1 because that is 0 0.75. And this yellow shaded area represents the area under the normal curve, which is 0 0.2734. But it also represents the probability of a certain event, which is 27.34%. So notice that normal curve is used in computing for probabilities. And when there are problem solving involving um, the mean and the standard deviation, therefore, we can compute for the probability of a certain event using the table. So for the third video lesson, we will talk about the area under the normal curve and probability notation. So again, this is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher.